Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My 17-year-old daughter started dating the guy who cheated on her eldest sister. Both me and my husband work corporate jobs, and it's hard for us to keep an eye on everything that our kids do. We trusted them to be good and trusted in ourselves that we raised them right. So the shock when she brought him home was unbelievable. My elder daughter, Ria, started dating this guy back in high school when she was 16. I still remember clearly the day I found her crying because that bastard cheated on her. As if cheating wasn't enough, the girl he cheated with was one of my daughter's friends that had been to my house a few times. My husband and I watched as our daughter struggled with self-esteem and we had to constantly keep reassuring her how beautiful and good she is. I was relieved when she started going out and bringing her friends around the house after a month and by the time she was ready to go to college, she was over that guy and had learned her lessons. I was helpless because I couldn't do anything in that situation except provide her mental support. I knew she had to go through bad experiences to understand the good ones. My husband did have a talk with the guy, but there was nothing more we could do. That was about two years ago, and then my younger daughter started dating. I did figure it out early on and tried to be patient until she was ready to introduce her boyfriend. But about a month in, my patience started running thin, and I asked her head on if she's seeing someone. She admitted that she's recently reunited with a guy she used to know and they hit it off, but she said she is still trying to figure out if it's anything serious and would only introduce us once she's sure. I was really curious about this person, but I settled on giving her her space. I didn't want to alienate her by pressuring her into doing something she isn't ready for. About three months after that, Layla told us that she has planned to introduce us to her boyfriend because she's soon to leave for college and wants to continue dating this guy. She said she's serious about him and would like us to support her decisions and keep an open mind. As soon as she asked us to keep an open mind, I was suspicious and wasn't really looking forward to meeting the guy who was sure to be a disappointment. What I didn't expect was the guy to be my elder daughter's ex. So it turns out that Layla ran into him when he was back in town after dropping out of college. He decided to enlist in the military and was home for a few months. They started talking and pretty soon they were dating. Layla said that she hated him too for what he did to her sister, but it wasn't his fault completely. She said, that their relationship is different and I almost laughed out loud because I always used to make fun of girls who were dumb enough to fall for frat boys but it turns out my daughter is one of those girls. I try to calm myself down while my husband talked to her and try to make her see how stupid her decisions were. Even if by some miracle we were to believe the guy is a changed man, she still shouldn't have forgiven him for cheating on her sister. It was a whole mess, and we kept trying to talk to her for weeks. I tried everything, from grounding her to threatening to cut off her internet, but she didn't listen to us. She fought back for that cheater and even said if we force her, she's going to choose him over us. That was my last straw. She was threatening us by thinking we'd be too soft because she's our child, but she forgot about Rhea. I decided there's no turning back from that point on, and if she's so desperate to learn her lessons the hard way, we should leave her on her own. So I talked to my husband. We decided to let her try and survive so she understands how easy she had it for life, and that guy wouldn't bat an eye before leaving her for another girl. I told Layla one last time to break it off, but she started arguing again, so I told her to leave our house because she isn't welcome here. She was an adult, and if she thinks she knows the best for her, then she should try and survive on her own. 
I also told her that her college fees were already paid, but we wouldn't pay for her dorm, and she can ask that boyfriend of hers. Of course, she didn't leave quietly and threw a fit. She started blaming us for being horrible parents and not understanding her. She called us out for loving her sister more and said we have always been partial to her. Eventually, she packed her bags and left, saying we'd regret kicking her out. And guess what? Today, four months later, she came back to my door asking for help. She said that she was living with her boyfriend and he promised he'd help her out so she should focus on college and her studies. She did look for a part-time job, but it was nowhere near enough to pay for rent. It was going well until he finally left for the military and just before leaving, he broke up with her, saying it was not working out for him. And to make it worse, he broke it off over a text. He even told her that she should move out because he hasn't paid the rent for the next month and told the owner he was moving out permanently. I guess they didn't sign a lease and it was an illegal subletting. Either way, she was crying and asking me for help, but I told her she isn't allowed back in my house. She really thought we were kidding when we said that guy is a walking red flag and she was ready to leave it all at the drop of a hat for that bastard. Now that she has finally come to know the reality of what a joke her relationship was, she should really try and survive out there on her own to drive home the point of prioritizing family over outsiders. Am I being an a-hole here or does she deserve this after what she did? Shouldn't she suffer for some time to really learn her lesson? I didn't know this, but apparently my husband was helping out my younger daughter after I refused to let her stay in my house. She went to him crying and he melted at the first sight of tears on her face. This is the sole reason I took it upon myself to talk to these girls when it came to teaching them how the real world works. My husband is too soft for his baby girls, and would do anything to make them comfortable and happy. So, of course, when Layla asked him for help, he immediately offered to pay for her rent. He's been doing this for a while and even gives her a small allowance. If I hadn't messed up the budget for last month, I wouldn't have ever found out about this. I had to check bank records because I couldn't figure out where the missing $1,300 went. It wasn't a small amount that I could chalk up to spare spending. Anyway, I saw the transfers and confronted my husband. We had a fight about this. He said he will keep helping his daughter because she's already learned her lessons and is trying to do better in life. I couldn't believe I had to teach him how that's exactly the problem because if she doesn't learn how to be completely independent, she'd keep making mistakes and relying on others. Now we're not talking, and this keeps getting messier and messier. I found out a few days ago that Layla is pregnant. As if it wasn't enough that she ran with that guy and chose him over us. She was stupid enough not to be careful, and here we are suffering the consequences of her actions. It was actually my elder daughter, Rhea, who told me as Layla called her for help. I don't know if this is all a sick joke, but I cannot believe the two of them can be so different. I called Layla as soon as I found out because no matter how much I wanted her to suffer, a baby is something serious and she needs to know what she's getting into. I called her home and told her she'll be staying with us until she figures out what she was going to do with the baby. If it was my choice, I would go for putting him up for adoption, but I can't make this choice for her. As a mother, she has to make this choice, and all I can do is counsel her and make sure she's healthy. Of course, the father is that bastard. She's been pregnant for eight weeks, and she didn't even notice missing her menstrual timing. If it wasn't for the baby bump, she might have never noticed. My husband is furious with her and hasn't spoken a single word since he found out. I'm conflicted between taking care of her so both she and the baby are safe and being furious because none of this would have happened if she listened to us from the start. 
I specifically want to beat the crap out of that guy who ruined the lives of both my daughters. I know it's been a long time since my updates, but I didn't have the energy to come and type here. I've been going with Layla to the hospital appointments and support groups and a counselor. She's seeing one to know her options and deciding what she wants to do. Thankfully, we wouldn't be going to the counselor anymore because she finally decided to put the baby up for adoption. She said she isn't ready to be a mother in any way, and I was relieved that she finally made one right decision. We are looking into the organization, and she asked both me and my husband to be actively involved in choosing the parents for her kid. I actually had to talk to my husband and make him see how important it is for us to support her in her current situation. This alone is a life-altering change, and she'd carry the guilt for the rest of her life. As much as I wanted her to learn from her mistakes, we can't turn our back on an innocent, unborn kid, and he finally came around. All I wish for now is a healthy delivery and good parents that will adopt a kid. NTA. After how she argued and chose the guy over her sister, she deserves to be kicked out of the family. You're not the a-hole for not taking her back when she faced the consequences of her choices. She chose it, and she should live through it. NTA, she's an adult with a part-time job and a college education that's been paid for. You didn't withdraw the fees, so all she had to do was make enough money to pay for rent, and if she's crying about that, then there's no hope for her. Cutting her off is the only way to teach her how to survive. Last night, I, male 22, was walking my dog, Romeo, male 3, when I got a call from my roommate, male 21, fake name, Andy, telling me he was inviting some friends over. Fine with me, he called first to warn me, and I used to work with two of those friends at one point. Those two would be called Brian and Zach. He also invited another guy, Cedric, and C's girlfriend came along. First time meeting Cedric, but saw him a few times at parties and didn't care for him. Long story, not relevant. Romeo is a big dog, but can sometimes be scared around men. When I arrived at the door, Romeo immediately barked at the sight of Jack, Brian, and Cedric. Then Cedric made the first comment that rubbed me wrong. He asked, yo, what's wrong with your dog? Why is he being a bitch? I looked at him, kind of surprised he called my dog a bitch, especially when I didn't even introduce myself yet. During the evening, Romeo was going around trying to get everyone's attention, usual, except he was avoiding Cedric, very unusual. A little later in the evening, we were smoking on my balcony, sitting in a circle, passing it around with the dog outside of the circle, just doing his doggy things. I hear the sound of a lighter flicking and I look towards C, sitting opposite me. He has his left hand outside the circle and my dog is right by his hand trying to smell him. I stood up and asked if he just ignited the lighter in my dog's face. He started saying things like, Chill out, man. It wasn't even touching him. Trust me. I've had dogs for years. He's a big boy. He can take it. Each time I answered something like, Yeah, but no. Still, don't do that. Just no. I continued denying any excuses he had because it didn't matter to me, and it got a little awkward around the balcony. I get that my dog is big and barked at him in the beginning, but still. Use some common sense. A flame near a dog full of fur is never a good idea. To calm me down, Andy said something like, we all do stupid shit when we're high, and I really disagreed with that. I told Andy, we both smoke regularly. Did we ever do shit to Romeo? No, because we're not morons. Calling him a moron was out of line and he stood up with a ready to fight stance. I told C to get out immediately. He started arguing, but I went to wake up his girlfriend and told both of them to get out of my home. C got out whining. It was unfair and Zach and Brian stayed a little bit. 
I immediately told Andy that I don't want C ever coming here again, that he acted like an idiot, and that weed does not excuse bad behavior with animals. A agreed that C did something stupid with the lighter, but thought I overreacted by kicking him out while calling him a moron. Z has a pet too, and agreed with me, saying that if anybody did this to his cat, he would have lost it. Brian didn't voice his opinion. I shouldn't have insulted him, it's not in my nature, but he crossed the line with my dog, and I took it personally. Romeo is my only responsibility, and I can't tolerate anything negative done to my pet. So, AITA for kicking Cedric out gave fake names instead of letters, which makes it clearer. Thanks, everyone, for the kind comments. I knew deep down that I made the right choice, but this thread solidified my beliefs. I will be having a discussion with Andy tonight about the situation, and you guys convinced me to stick to my guns on this. And to anyone wondering what the handsome Romeo looks like, I don't know how to use Imgur, but there's a pic of him on my profile. Thanks, guys. NTA, he was disrespectful to you and your dog. And you're right, he acted like a moron. He isn't a good person. Dogs can tell this, which is why Romeo barked at him as soon as he saw him. You were right to kick him out, and you were right to let your friend know that he's never invited back. NTA, every single dog I know barks at strangers coming into their home until they're able to smell assess who they are, if they're a threat, etc. He's just a dog. C decided to be malicious towards the dog and flick an open flame right in front of him. Dog's noses are extremely sensitive and he very well could have hurt him. I would have kicked him out too. My friend, Murr, 30s female, had trouble making ends meet, so my friends and I, also 30s, have been covering her expenses for the last few months. She's thankfully on a more sound financial footing now, and as a thank you, offered to take us all out to dinner. We declined, but she insisted and picked a really fancy restaurant. Because we didn't want to burden her, we all stuck with water and opted to either split the main course between two people or ordered only an appetizer. Mer, on the other hand, got an incredibly expensive bottle of wine, several appetizers, and the most expensive main course on the menu, none of which she shared beyond offering us a sip from her wine glass or a bite. She even ordered several desserts for herself as well as another expensive bottle of dessert wine. All in all, the bill was over a grand. I was coming out of the bathroom when Murr pulled me aside. She was deeply apologetic as she'd left her wallet at home and asked if I could cover the bill and she'd pay me back the next day. We've been friends for over a decade and trust each other, so I agreed and even went up to the waiter to pay for it away from our table so as to spare Murr the embarrassment since it was supposed to be her treat. I'm incredibly uncomfortable when it comes to asking for money, so I waited a week. I then texted, asking if it would be possible for her to pay me back by the following week, since if she pays me with a personal check, it might take some time for my bank to clear it. My husband and I had some major unexpected expenditures, and so I needed the money as I didn't want to dip into our emergency funds. She was incredibly apologetic, as she called me later that day and swore she would, except she didn't. I even resorted to emailing her when she no longer replied to my texts and ignored my calls. Eventually, I resorted to sending her a message in our group chat with all of our friends as she was still replying there, and since I was angry, accused her of basically using me to buy herself a lavish meal and to make herself look good in front of our friends. Everyone was surprised as they hadn't known I was the one who covered the cost of the meal, and they were upset with Murr for misleading them all and for ignoring me and not paying me back. Murr finally paid me, 
but she accused me of purposefully embarrassing her and making everyone turn against her. I didn't think I was out of line, but one of our friends thought maybe she couldn't afford to pay the bill and felt embarrassed, and that I could have gone by her place to personally speak to her first before blasting her in our GC. I know what it feels like to be the poor friend and not want to be indebted, and so now I'm beginning to second-guess my behavior. I also definitely could have refrained from accusing her of taking advantage of me and just asked her to pay me back. A-I-T-A? Nope. N-T-A. And she did take advantage of you, and yes, you did embarrass her in front of your friends because she 100% would have ripped you off if you didn't. She learned a lesson. You do have a limit and you learned one too. Never loan her money again because she's the type to try and avoid paying you back. As for the friend, Murr is an adult and made the adult decision to spend that amount of money that night. If she couldn't afford it, she didn't have to. One, decide to go someplace that expensive. Two, not forget her wallet. Three, Not ask for one of you to cover everything to save face. Four, not try to weasel out of paying you back. NTA, she's not your poor friend. She's a con artist. She conned you into paying for the meal and has probably been conning all of you into paying for her expenses for months. She needed to be called out on it. Hopefully, none of you will give this grifter another dime.